Good morning. Uh, my name is Trevor Audabuni Amurununi Palacio. Welcome to Wamalali Audabuni Amurununi Media, brought to you by the United States of Africa. We want to welcome everyone to uh, this platform today where we will have a discussion with the Garifuna community, which is an indigenous nation from the Western Hemisphere, from the land of SVG, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, exiled from St. Vincent in 1797 by the British. We have uh, brothers and sisters from Guatemala, Nicaragua, Guat uh, Belize, uh, St. Vincent, Honduras, who will be joining us today to share with you, the rest of the world, the beautiful history of Garifuna people. Uh, first and foremost, we want to thank uh, some of our sponsors. Uh, we want to thank uh, Tunaki TV. Uh, we also want to thank uh, Zambia National Broadcasting Corporation, ZNBC TV One, and Arsarsi Real Estate. Uh, we're broadcasting and streaming live on the United States of Africa Facebook page, the African History Month channel, and Tunachi TV YouTube channel with over 700,000 followers. It's going to be a great conversation here today. Again, my name is Trevor Palacio. We want to come in and start by introducing our guests. Uh, each person will introduce themselves and then we, we will go into the line of questions. We want to start with Jamal Swaso from Belize. Sir, if you could introduce yourself. Good day, everyone. Good day, everyone listening. My name is Jamal Swaso. I'm from Belize. I am the co-manager of Garena Craft and Art Gallery and also an active youth in terms of, well, active personality in terms of Garifuna activism in Belize and a spokesperson for the demographic that I represent. Um, I speak, I am also a proponent of black identity and uh, establishing the fact that I'm African as well as a Garifuna. Um, so I'm welcoming the discussion today to be a part of it, being a young member of the movement of our Garifuna progress. Um, I'm welcoming this discussion today. So again, thanks for the invite, Trevor, and I'm welcome to this discussion. Thank you, brother. Uh, Jamal Swaso from Belize. Malcolm Gonzalez, Nicaragua. Um, welcome, welcome to everyone. Um, my name is Malcolm Gonzalez. I'm from Nicaragua. I am um, an active member of the IG Nicaragua. I'm the secretary of the of the um, direct board of directors here in Nicaragua. Also, um, a member helping uh, support organization. So I'm very pleased to be here and be part of this um, discussion. And many thanks to um, to have me here. Salute, brother Malcolm, all the way from Honduras. Uh, Thank you, my brother. My pleasure, brother. All the way from Honduras, Professor Tulio Martinez. Good evening, everybody. My name is Tulio Martinez. I am the vice president of the IGC in Honduras. Um, we have been working for a couple of years with Mr. Trevor and the team here in my country. We are working hard. In fact, uh, we, ha we are the biggest a Garifuna community in the world. We in Honduras we have 48, like uh, let's say 50 communities because we have a community here in San Pedro Sula, another one in Tegucigalpa, the capital city. We are trying to work together with all the Garifuna people around the world. In fact, in our accounts, uh, we are more than one million Garifuna in the world, believe me or not, but we are this, and maybe we are more because we are not counting the Garifuna people that we have in Europe. We have a lot of uh, Garifuna in Spain and Italy and France and England. Um, so maybe we are over the million Garifuna in this world. For me, it's a pleasure to meet you, um, to see face by face, 
through the internet and to extend and, and tights and maybe very soon very soon we will be working together in our projects in our project that is going to settle uh, a strong um institutions for the future of our kids and grandkids for me it's a pleasure to be today and um, i'm here to listen to you and to tell you the history of the Griffona people in my country and the countries uh, that are around Honduras. Thank you very much to be here. Thank you, uh, Professor Tulio Martinez. Um, today we will have a conversation about a Garifuna warrior dance called Wanarawa. And we have with us today the vanguard, uh, the, the keeper of this uh, custom called Wanarawa, Antonio Norales. Brother Norales, can you please introduce yourself? Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon, brothers. Um, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Uh, I just, uh, my name is Antonio Norales. I was uh, born in Honduras. My father brought me to the United States in the decade of the 70s to Harlem, New York. I uh, noticed that in Harlem, New York, it wasn't that much uh, Garifuna culture. And there was a lot of distraction for us young kids in the 70s at 10 years old, my brothers and I. So I uh, didn't focus so much in our culture because I was trying so hard to fit in with the young Americans' brothers. But uh, there was a gentleman called uh, Aurelio back in the days who had the group, so we decided to you know, instead of focusing so much in the American culture and trying to fit in, I know that I'm uh, deep in my heart, I felt that, you know, hey, you know, if this gentleman is here, got a group of uh, one out of our warriors, dancers, I said, let me join in because that would keep my mind focused away from all the negativity that was going on and the distraction. And we did, my brothers and I, but in 1979, I joined the U.S. Army military. I went in for 10 years, and then uh, when I came out, 1989, I decided to uh, focus again. It's just something in me, it's ancestors that was bugging me to come back deep right. in my heart, in my blood, and Garifuna. I decided to come back and say, hey, you know, let me make a group. So our group, when I don't go a warrior dance group, mm -hmm. was founded in 1990 originally 1990 even though we started in the 70s but we founded 1990 in harlem new york um you can go to uh there's a documentary that i uh, actually made it's called what the wanaragua uh the garifuna guardian antonio norales the garifuna guardian and you okay. can also go to youtube uh excuse me facebook and actually look for wanaragua warriors dance group welcome thank you for having me and uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, Brother Norales. And um, right now, uh, we want to give a moment of silence to our ancestors, um, those who paved the way for us. Please, a moment of silence to our ancestors. To be a Garifuna is something that is unspoken of. History has not written too much about Garifuna history. History has not written too much about Garifuna history, but the Garifuna people are the legendary warriors who defeated the British. The Garifuna warriors are the legendary warriors, black warriors, who defeated the French. Way before Haiti retained or obtained its independence from slavery, the Garifuna people were an autonomous nation. Our narrative has been shared by many, but now we 
are writing our own narrative. The individuals who are here to speak with you today, Tomas Sanchez from Guatemala, Julio Green from Honduras, Jamal Belize, Malcolm from Nicaragua, we're going to share with you what Garifa and the people have done in each one of these countries to uplift that country. Although unthankful, ungrateful, these countries are thriving because of people like Garina. Uh, let's start with Brother Tulio Martinez for now. Uh, we wanted to start with St. Vincent when we get the proper order of people in. We want to basically do it from where we started, St. Vincent, where we were exiled in 1797. And then we go on down to Honduras, Roatan. And then from there, we went on to places like Belize. And then we went on to places like Guatemala. And then we went on to places like Nicaragua. And later, we came to the United States of America. Professor Tulio, uh, the Garifuna people, uh, they arrived in Honduras uh, in April the 12th of 1797 after being exiled from St. Vincent. Can you tell us a little bit about the history of Garinagu in short, thereafter, name a couple of Garifuna individuals who have benefited the country of Honduras. Professor Tulio. Okay, thank you everybody. Um, for me, it's a pleasure to, um, to share with you uh, small knowledge I have about the history of my people. But before that, let me go a little bit back in time and see that uh, the presence of the black people in Honduras, it doesn't start in 1795, 90, 97. Mm -hmm. It starts in... Um, 1635 were two ships coming from Nigeria from the area that now is known as Ni as Nigeria sank in front of St. Vincent. In that time, a lot of people that were going to be slaves in the United States and, and some part of Brazil, they 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 got free because of the thinking and then they went to settle with the with the Indians, Arawakos in St. Vincent Island. So they mix and and from there is that uh, becomes the Garifuna people. Exactly in 1635 was the beginning of the Garifuna, us. In the other side, in, uh, in Honduras, we got the presence of black people starting in 1641, where one Portuguese man, Lorenzo Gramalco, uh, got a um, uh, tank in front of the La Mosquitia coast and 200 slaves that were 200 black men that were going to be a slave, they got free and they mixed with the mosquito population that are the original people living in the Mosquito Coast. And uh, they produce the another um, population, black population that is the Sambos. Uh, all the population living in, in, the, in Gracias a Dios, the department close to Nicaragua, and majority of the people living in the North Coast in Nicaragua, they are Mosquito, but they are a mix of black men and Indians, okay. original Indians in the North Coast, but they are not Garifuna, they are called Sambos right now. Yeah. Um, the Garifuna people live in St. Vincent and all the islands around from 1635 up to the time where the, um, the French go to be ruling uh, the um, St. Vincent Island. And after some times, 
there was a kind of street in between France and 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 England, and um, Saint Vincent went from France to to British ruling. The situation is that the British that they they were adjusted to have slaves. And they saw that the Garifuna, black people with dark skin, they were free. And from there, it was a bad message for the rest of the black to having black people free. And in Jamaica, and uh, majority of the part of the United States, they had um, slaves. So they decide, they decide to move these people from St. Vincent and put them away in a place where they were not seen. Also in a place where they will not have any kind of influence in the other black population that were adjusted to be living in the slavery. Like in, in Trinidad and Tobago, they had the slaves. In Jamaica, they had the slaves. Um, um, in, the, in the islands, uh, they have a lot of slaves working in the farms and also in the United States. For them, it was a bad message to having the Garifuna people, uh, dark people, and being free. So uh, I think that that was the origin of the of the of the war that we have with the British. At the end, they they got the power. We surrendered, they killed our leaders. Right. Um, they took all our ancestors from St. Vincent to Beliso, and from Beliso, they took them to uh, Roatan, where we settled the first Garifuna people um, that is called Punta Gorda in, um, in Roatan. And, and how has the, and what has happened since? Uh, that point uh, to 2021. Uh, that if, was, if we could name, uh, a, if we could name a couple of Garifuna leaders who have been uh, uh, instrumental in getting Honduras to where is that in 2021. And if you could also speak about the condition of Garifuna people in Honduras right now, because they're killing us. Okay. Um, we have a lot of those leaders from from the past, uh, but recently in the last century, in the 20th century, we have, um, I think that one of, of our major leaders, it was um, Dr. Lacayo, he was a, a, a good leader. He was very interested in in the growing of the Garifuna people. He was a doctor, but he, de he decides not to work in La Ceiba, not to work in Tegucigalpa, not to work in the big city, but he, de he decides to go and work uh, among us, the Garifuna people. Um, also his son, Lombardo Lacayo, he was a, a, a good example of commitment for the working in the benefit of, of, of the Garifuna people. Uh, in the past, uh, in the army area, we have a, a Juan Francisco Bulnes, Juan Mulugu. He, he was a soldier that he, he, he was part of the Francisco Morazan army. Okay. Um, also, uh, uh, we we have a lot of some new generation boys and girls that are working for the growing of or the better of the condition of living of the Garifuna people in the in the North Coast. Um, but also, we have a, a Garifuna man in science, uh, Dr. Cirilo Nelson. Okay. I, I I am not sure if he's from Belize or he's from Honduras. Uh, when, when, when he was alive and I talked to him, um, I went to him and talked and asked him for some advice because I was going to, to, to be in the score team in, in the United States and he gave me the best advice I have uh, got because, uh, uh, believe me, I, 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 I don't regret his advice. I, I, I got good things. But... Uh, in that time, I was thinking that he was from Honduras, but some people say that he is from Belize. But uh, most of the time he was here working for the National Honduran University. And recently 
I, I read that uh, he died. But uh, he is one of the scientific persons, um, Garifuna ones, that uh, um, are giving a lot of contribution for the image of our people. Uh, that is in the science, uh, but also we have a, a good representatives in the um, in the sport, okay. uh, especially in the soccer uh, area. Right. And right. if my um, my 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 dream is that some days one Garifuna, uh, one Garifuna man or one Garifuna girl will win a, a gold medal in the Olympics. Some days because we have good people in swimming, and 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 spinning, and right. I think that we have condition if we work it with them. I mean, it, this is one of my dreams. That before I die, I want to see one black man holding the gold medal somewhere. Um, so you're saying so you that even the people in Honduras uh, uh, have proven to be a benefit to the entire society. But if you could speak, if you could br speak briefly before yes. we go on to our brother Jamal about okay. how that even the people are being treated right now, though, in Honduras. Okay, I think that we are no in good um, condition with the government. In fact, in my country, we have uh, a lot of laws, a lot of rules, but uh, the problem with um, with 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 the political situation here is that um, we are not in a good um, condition uh, with the people that is ruling the country. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, they are abusing of the power. They are not right, but since they have the power right now, they are abusing and they are trying to separate uh, the Garifuna population from their places. They are they want to take them away from the communities. They want to take their land. They are killing um, a lot of Garifuna leaders and we are going to be, I mean, we are working in trying to reject that condition. And Thank we you. hope that very soon that will that will be done and then we will be in better condition because the problem of the Garifuna people is not that we are black exactly, but is the situation is that uh, we are poor. Yeah. Because yeah. we didn't have the support to get our own um, business that is going to give us better economic condition and with better economic condition, we will get everything we want. I agree with we agree with you. We agree with you one hundred percent. Thank you, Professor Tulio. Thank you very uh, much. Break down with the introduction of the history of Garifuna people and what and who have been instrumental in the success of Honduras. Uh, right mm -hmm. now, we need Jennifer Mejia and uh, Marceleni uh, Mejia Free. Uh, yes, Jennifer Mejia is running for an office in Honduras, uh, March right. the fourteenth. But she was recently put in jail for allegedly yeah. usurpation of Garifuna territory. So free Sister Jennifer Mejia and her sister right now. And recently, Brother Pandi was killed in Corozal uh, because they want to take our land. This is going on 50 Garifuna leaders that have been killed in Honduras. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Julio. Uh, Thank you Jamal, for listening to me. Uh, uh, Jamal. Yes. Uh, Garifuna people uh, in Belize. When did Garifuna people get to Belize? And followed by Tomas Sanchez, when did Garifuna people get to uh, Guatemala? Welcome aboard, Jamal Swaso. When did Garifuna people get to Belize? Name a couple of powerhouses that has impacted the Belizean community, and what is the condition of Garifuna in Belize right now? All right, then. Um, Garifuna arrived in Belize from Honduras, so Firstly, we, the first arrival of the Garifuna in Belize was in 1902, when the first trip of approximately 150 people came from Honduras to, um, to Belize, in southern Belize specifically. Then after that, throughout that duration, many different from between that, that time and 1920, at 1823, some from smaller groups came, but the largest group of Garifuna that came from Honduras to Belize was in 1823. 
when the largest group came to Belize from Honduras. Um, since then, our population has fluctuated. So we were at 11% once, and now we are only 6% of the population here in Belize um, in terms of Garifuna living, residing in Belize. Only 6% of the population of Garifuna living in Belize. Um, what uh, the next question will be? The next... The next, yeah, the, if you could name a couple of Garifuna uh, powerhouses, uh, mm -hmm. the Thomas Vincents, etc., who have influenced Belize in a positive way. The in Belize we have main the main influence that has come from Garifuna in Belize are mainly the educators. Uh, once the Garifuna go were the only people who were educating and going into villages and going where no one else wanted to go. So the primary role of the Garifuna in Belize were as educators back in the days. But prior to that, we were traders and we were farmers. But move, then we started to move more into the academics and we become teachers in terms of the, at the primary, secondary, and the tertiary level. But okay. when schools started to open in the remote areas, um, nobody else in the country really and truly wanted to go and teach. The Garina go of Belize basically went and took up that task, and so they were educators of the country in the, in the origin of the of Belize when it was establishing the education. You no, know? um, one of the main person who has contributed greatly to Belize as a Garifuna person is Thomas Vincent Ramos and his colleagues who fought. He's a man from Honduras that migrated to Belize. Um, he fought greatly for, for Garifuna empowerment and black light, but, and it was grounded on the basis of Marcus Garvey principle because during the time of Thomas Vincent Ramos, Marcus Garvey was also at his head there. So he was also a member of UNIA and his principles, like he had the Carib Sick Foundation for people who got sick. He had the, um, the fund development for, for fund acquisition for people. And he also had um, other foundation that he had established in the, in the country for Garifuna development. Well, Thomas Vincent Ramos' time in Belize wasn't the best um, because, you know, amongst our people, we sometimes we, we stone those who, who because of uh, petty reasons. So we, we, they, he was somewhat belittled. Here in Belize, even though he was he's the founder of Garifuna Settlement Day, he negotiated with the British to establish Garifuna Settlement Day, which is a national holiday across the country that is celebrated by everyone um, in Belize. But in his time, the community then um, neglected him, uh, pushed him away. But he history redeemed him. No, we also have members from the National Garifuna Council who continue on. Thomas Vincent Ramos' dream and continue on in that consistency um, to establish the National Garifuna Council. They also have many other members who are in academics and many other um, fields, but those are the main, main steer that has continuously established the Garifuna stance in Belize at this time. Okay, and how many Garifuna communities are in Belize? There are currently six Garifuna communities that are predominantly Garifuna communities in our country. We have Hopkins, mm -hmm. Barranco, Dangriga, Cienbite, mm -hmm. and Georgetown. Those are the main primary Garifuna communities in the East. And Punta okay. Gorda. Forget Punta Gorda. Okay. And we can't name the 48 in Honduras. The, we will be here all day. Yeah. So, uh, and what is and what is the social condition of Garinagu? Uh, in, in Honduras, they kill it, right? Mm. In, in Belize, what is the social, political mm. condition of Garinagu people in short? Well, in the, in Belize, our social and political condition, um, we have a very dynamic reach in terms of social because we engage both politically mm. and in academics. But like what Sir said, Mr. Tulio said, um, we are somewhat at a financial downturn. Then we have all the academics and everything, but we have not yet established an economic base that is sustainable for, to ensure that we are functioning properly and, and across the board because it's yes, indeed we're involved in politics and we're involved in social discussion in terms of academics, but 
the economics we are losing on that part and that's why our lands are being have been taken away because we have no economic stability um we we our lands are they are taking advantage of us we are being displaced we have to go and work in the cities we are we are removed from our land and then that removes our indigenousness yeah. and what i mean other thing too that in the means we we have a distinct difference that we have with the Creole, our Creole brothers and sisters who are also Africans like ourselves. Right. Uh, we are divided because of colonial history. Right. So that alone creates a dynamic for our population because we, we, we are a small number of black people in our country and add to that that we are divided amongst each other. So those things um, affect our social interaction in Belize. Right. Uh, uh, man, thank you so much for sharing that and uh, mm. bring, bringing to the platform um, the history of Garifuna people in Belize. Uh, we want to take this moment to remind everyone uh, and welcome everyone uh, to uh, African History Month. Uh, this is the third annual celebration of African History Month, and we're streaming live on uh, United States of Africa Facebook page on African History Month channel and to, uh, to uh, Tunachi TV YouTube channel with over 700,000 followers. So we want to thank our sponsors. Uh, we also want to thank President Daniel and Wambuno for continuing to push the agenda forward towards self-determination for the Black nation. Uh, Brother Malcolm Gonzalez, all the way from Nicaragua, uh, when did Garifuna people arrive uh, to Nicaragua? And if you could name a couple of powerhouses, Garifuna leaders who have impacted Nicaragua in a positive way. Malcolm, your, your microphone is on uh, mute. There you go. So this year we, we the, the Ifuno people of Nicaragua will be celebrating 189 years since arriving to the country of Nicaragua. The people of Nicaragua that, that came from Honduras or the Garifuna people that came from Honduras did not came with make one move. You know, this happened gradually. So what really happened was that um, these families, these families was attracted by the work of that time, which was lumber cutting and um, uh, transportation and, and different economical activity at that time in the in the um, Caribbean coast of Nicaragua. So this family would, would just came come to Nicaragua, work, and at the conclusion of the contract, they would return. So, in the year in the 1910, around that time, going back to Honduras was very difficult during to the um, borders dispute at the time. So okay. it, it made for these families to return back to Honduras. So what happened is that in that in that lapse of time, those family was integrating little. little Integrating um, into the the, 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 the the hierarchy and structure of the ethnical makeup of the Atlantic coast at that time. So, exactly. So, so after the Garifuna began bearing their ancestors, you know that uh, that mean a lot to the Garifuna people. So after they they buried their first dead dead, um, it it. it it make it very difficult for them to return back home. So these families decide, decided to stay, stay back. Yeah. You have a um, uh, different community in the Pralagun basin of Garifuna people. We're re re relatively a minority in Nicaragua. Um, there is a, around, I would say maybe, um, the, in the last census that um, they carried out in Nicaragua in 2005, in, in 25, um, there was around approximately seven to 10,000 Garifunas 
in Nicaragua. So present day at this present day um there there are more government than that, you know, because we had multiplied, you know. So the history of, of, of the Garifuna people in Nicaragua, it's, uh, it's, it, it's as traumatic as the, the voyage that we made from Honduras, or from um, St. Vincent to Honduras, and from Honduras dispersing around the, the, the Central American coast, Central American coast. So when the Garifuna people came to Nicaragua, you know, it, 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 as newcomers, people usually looked, looked upon them like, what, what is happening here? Who is these people? And there was a lot of um, discrimination and um, in treatment to the Garifuna people at that moment. You know, one of the, the things that happened in this lost their, um, their language and a lot of their identity also was lost in that moment because they, they feel it was more it was much better to to integrate integrated right. and 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 to integrate it into the structure stru cultural structure at that time you know which was um they they they, they, they exchanged their language garifuna for uh, um, creole and a lot of their um the, the, the cultural identity they, lo they lost because of the heavy discrimination that they suffered during to that time and because of uh, being a very relatively small minority you know it was a lot of pressure to continue with spirituality different practices that to next to, to, to different people was strange at that. so the Garifuna people decided to um last cultural cultural the cultural identity you know but um at this moment we are i believe 19 in the, in the 1993 there was a great that was moving towards um revitalization process part of nicaragua in different communities you know and that had been continuing That is part that is happening, and I'm very uh, positive about that. That um, that if the people in Nicaragua will achieve that, before. because we believe that only by getting together, by um, sh getting together, unite in a way. You see, we we believe that that the, the end or or what we're doing, the end in. in our cultural development is not in itself. It's with productive activity that will benefit the community. And that's why we believe that, that revitalizing our culture, revitalizing the way our identity is very important in the unity of our people. So doing this, then people will come together and then it will work. Because is is to live good. You know, and I believe that is that is the the um, the aim of all Garifuna people around the world. We want to be treated with respect, and we want to enjoy our full happiness that God gives us on this earth. And to to do that, you know, the important thing is to, to to unite as a people. So that is the state we are where we at we are at in, in Nicaragua. We are in the stage of uniting again. Uniting again and, and bringing force together to work to work for this good. Because, um, of course, there had been a lot of um, benefit, um, from the Nicaraguan uh, constitution for Nicaragua people. You know, there had been laws that was legislated that benefit that benefited directly the Nicaraguan people, like the law twenty four, the law for autonomy, law for autonomy law that benefit the Nicaragua that give this
your your signal is breaking up real, real bad, Brother Malcolm. Hello, guys. Yes, sir. Brother Tomas, you will be next. Um, <laughs> you sound real good and you look good as well. Uh, Brother Thank Malcolm, you. uh, your, your signal is breaking off. Uh, since you're breaking off there, Brother Malcolm, we want to thank Nicaragua. Uh, Brother Malcolm, again, is the secretary of the International Garifuna Council in Nicaragua. President Gregorio uh, Sambola, Vice President Clifford Herbert, and Treasurer Edgardo Su. Uh, very beautiful and interesting story. Uh, everything that he just shared with me about Nicaragua is really new to me and is very touching. Uh, Tomas Rolando Sanchez, Guatemala. Uh, uh, adjust your camera a little bit, bro, so we can see your entire face. There we go. Like this, for example? There we go. Perfect, sir. Uh, if you can tell us a little bit about when Garifa the people got to Guatemala and uh, their history there. Well, first and foremost, guys, uh, we're sorry for all this uh, weakness signals, but uh, Guatemala is not no exception. However, be it the case, I'm so honored to be a part of this beautiful platform. And uh, please allow me to say a few words in my language because then it's always uh, a strategy we use to call upon our ancestors to uh, protect and serve whenever it's possible. And uh, we're saying that we're so thankful for the intervention of the Most High and thanks to each and every one of you guys. In this case, uh, Guatemala is no different from most of uh, our people in the diaspora because we are all aware that uh, the 12th of uh, April 1797, was like a new beginning for most of us here in this, not in this hemisphere, but in Central America. Uh, Brother Sawasa was saying that, yes, there are records that uh, the arrival of the um, Garifuna people in Belize could have been in 1802. We don't have those exact records most of us are basing our history on the oral tradition and therefore stick to the uh, general information that the brothers and sisters are sharing from Belize. In this case, in our oral tradition, it is said that we have been here in Livingston since 1802. So therefore that would have been five years after the arrival of the Garifuna people in Rotang. And since then, we have been struggling as well. In this case, today, we're still fighting for our land, still fighting for our territory, still fighting for inclusion, still fighting for almost everything that we need as human beings, not only human beings, but as Garifuna as well. However, to the overall spec is that there have been some minor achievements. And in my case, I would always like to talk about something that took place the 18th of May, 2001, when we were recognized as a, town, as a people here in Guatemala. And we would like to emphasize and push as much as we can as far as that recognition and proclamation is concerned now that we're approximating the date, which is only about maybe two or three months away, and take it from there. You know, um, I'm really, really uh, disappointed with everything that's going on in Honduras today. As we speak, as we are in this live program, there are brothers and sisters at this moment, as we speak, fighting for the liberation, or, uh, liberation of our two sisters in Trujillo. Just briefly. Thank you, Brother Tomas. And could you name a couple of Garifuna leaders, uh, past or present, who have impacted Garifuna, uh, Guatemala in a positive way? 
<laughs> well, uh, we have always considered Roberto Mejia, mm -hmm. Don Beto Mejia, as he was well known, as he, he could be one of our national heroes. He was the one who was able to open the doors for a lot of the activities that are taking place today in Guatemala. I am almost certain that if it wasn't for Roberto Mejia or Don Beto, the recognition that we're getting here in Guatemala wouldn't be the case today. However, there are new, uh, new fighters that are picking up the baton and there are a few that always can mention at the tip of my town, we have my Mario Gerardo Ellington, which is, uh, was very instrumental in the celebration of what it is today, of what is our national day in Guatemala, which is the 26th of November of every year. And uh, it's a follow-up. I would say to what uh, the brothers and sisters from Belize are doing. In other words, theirs, theirs is every 19th mm -hmm. and ours is every 26th. So the credit that Mark, uh, the credit that uh, Mr. Uh, TV Ramos maybe have accomplished right. uh, in Belize could be the same thing that Roberto Mejia was trying to do here. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, the final question is going to be um, asked that each one of you answer it in brief. Okay. Uh, but before we go into that question, um, uh, uh, Antonio Norales is about to give us a brief uh, synopsis of what Guanajuato is, how it was formulated, and how we can apply it in 2021. Uh, so, again, uh, Wanatawa is the Garifuna Warriors dance. It's a celebrity <laughs> dance. And Jamal Suazo is a warrior. Antonio Norales is a warrior. Julio Green is a warrior. Malcolm Gonzalez is a warrior. Tomas Lopez is a warrior. I am a warrior. We are all warriors. And, and, fighters. and, and we are in a battlefield where they're literally killing our people. And uh, uh, in Nation Formation 101, the formation of media, and that's one of the things that Jamal focuses on, that we focus on, and that's why we're here right now, to disseminate information. We're about to dance with Nadagua on a global scale because we're about to be successful in overcoming our enemies. So Brother Norales, uh, because of time, uh, give us a synopsis of what Nadagua is and how it came into being. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> My name is Antonio Norales. I was born in La Ceiba, Honduras, and I was raised in Trujillo, Colón. I, uh, at the age of uh, seven, went to Trujillo to the age of 10, and that's when I learned more about our, our culture, our traditions. I, uh, seen the first Wanatawa warrior costume in Trujillo, a great fisherman and warrior named Naditi in Trujillo. When I seen that warrior's costume, it just impacted me. So I started to do history, read more about, you know, the Wanatawa warrior history. Uh, let's not forget, people, that each one of us have a warrior inside of us. Thank you, Chief Joseph Chatouillet, our great rebel leader. Thank you. Each one of us is a warrior. It's in us. We got to use it accordingly. Uh, according to history, could be not accurate on the date 1600s or in between 1600s and 1400s. Our, according to our understand, the island of St. Vincent was a port between Africa and the New World. It was very important for the English and the French, very important, because they'll stop 
gathered whatever they want to gather and keep on on a trip to the new world. When they arrive, according to what I understand, to St. Vincent, the Arawaks was there already. And to be exact, it was Africans there already, believe it or not, in the island of St. Vincent. Now, supposedly, and there's a little, you know, discrepancy in regards how the Garifuna got there, the black man. Supposedly it's a shipwreck. But I do understand that most of the slaves was tied up and chained down in the ship. Now, if the ship went down, how did it get from the direct to the shores of St. Vincent? But anyway, I know that the most agile Africans swam to the island of St. Vincent. When they got there, they noticed that it was more females than males because they exiled some of the males, Arawak Indians. Anyway, when the Africans got there, they mingled with the Arawaks and they actually became one race, which is the Garifuna, Garinago. And, be and because the time, brother Antonio, if you could go into what Wanarago is and, 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 and uh, how it was celebrated and why it was celebrated, please. Okay. When Aragua is a jubilant dance, <clears throat> our rebel leadership fought against the French and the English. The, the Wanaragua actually wore a costume, which is a camouflage, a strategy, camouflage, that they used against the enemy. So one of the jubilant dance was actually, you know, celebrated their victory by dancing the Wanaragua dance. Mind you that the Wanaragua was not nothing like this. This is something that we actually decided to wear nowadays to make it more leverage. But according to understand, back in the days, it was straw, straw skirt, camouflage. Now, the Wanaragua warrior covered his face with mud, sorry, clay, excuse me, clay to to cover his identity. And if you notice that today, actually in history, the Wanarawa wore a lot of feathers in the customs because that represents the Arawaks, Indians. They wore a lot of feathers to cover themselves, to camouflage themselves, with very, very interesting tactics that they use. Today, I use more, actually, ribbons, and the ribbons are whenever you are dancing, you covering your skin to hide your identity. You want to take away looking like a warrior, like a excuse me, like a man. So you want to look like more like camouflage yourself as a woman. So when the English returned to the village, they learned that there was only they thought that there was only females in the village. They came in, they put their guards down and their weapons, and our rebel leader, Sheikh Joshi Jatuyev, with his soldiers, attacked the enemy, which they actually won battles. Right. Then they got actually, they noticed that, hey, this is not woman. So they attacked again, and actually they defeated us in some, some ways. So don't forget that the Garifuna people, especially the one in Honduras, they are very, very aggressive soldiers, aggressive uh, Garifunas. Now, the dance between and the customs in the Honduran side compared to the Belizean is basically the same dance strategy. It's basically, but the customs are somewhat different. Right. Right. In Belize, somewhat different. Supposedly in Belize, the custom is. Uh, it's a French soldier, correct? Between a French soldier or a cook. But what's more important is that they're warriors. They're right. dancing. They're expressing themselves as they go on, as they dance. They're expressing themselves. Again, the one from Honduras, 
is very, very aggressive. Mm. Very aggressive. So, like I said before, each one of us has a warrior in us. Right. And we must thank our rebel leader, Chief Joseph Satuye. Salute. Uh, thank you, brother. Thank you. Uh, and, and that's what the next question is going to lead to is the warrior within each one of us. And now I'm just going to go and I'm just going to hit each individual. Uh, and we want to talk a little bit about the social condition of Garinabu, period. And not just your country, uh, because uh, we're here to tell you that the struggle is in Belize, the struggle is in Honduras, the struggle is in Guatemala, the struggle is in Bronx, New York, it's in Los Angeles, it, it, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. Now, it seems as if our ancestors, Brother Jamal, is calling us out as Garifuna people to, 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 to ignite that warrior within. And the ancestors are not only calling Garifuna people, but uh, uh, it's calling the Ethiopian brothers and sisters, the Somalian brothers and sisters, uh, 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 the brothers in Kenya, South Africa, is calling every last one of us to stand up and rise to the occasion called the warrior within to manifest a brighter future for our people. Jamal Swaso, if, if, if speak to us about that warrior in between and every person has a minute and a half so that we could close this conversation. Speak to us about that warrior within and give us a message that is going to ignite that warrior within. Well, the warrior within is necessary for the Garifuna people to, to continue our survival and our existence. Um, the, the message that I have for our Garifuna people is something rhetorical that we always say, unite. Um, we have to get rid of these concepts of borders because, as we all can see, our movement was cross borders. So I believe that we need to eliminate that concept of borders and eliminate our differences and find that we are all one people. And then also economic, uh, economic stimulation. We really and truly need economic stimulation. Uh, we... We are focused, yes, on our academic success and so on, but everyone around us within all our respective countries are building economic stability and, uh, and foundation. And we are sometimes missing the boat or doing it on a too small of a scale and also bridge the gap. Our right. Africans throughout the world needs to bridge the gap. Our Garifuna have to bridge the gap. The, all of us have to work together. All of us are facing different um, challenges, but Many a time is because of our Africanness and of because we exist as black people. So we need to bridge the gap between all of us and remove those concepts that we have created in our mind that differentiate us. And also, also be self-determined and be as dedicated to the African struggle for un universal unity. That's my message. Thank you, Brother Jamal Swaso, all the way from Belize. And if you are in the Belize area, uh, this is the young man to look for. He is the bona fide, the bona fide leader there. Uh, Malcolm Gonzalez, Nicaragua, give us a message about that warrior within. Uh, uh, what can you say to us to ignite it? Brother Malcolm. Okay, having a little technical issue there with uh, Brother Malcolm. Uh, Brother Tulio Green, the warrior within. If you could give us a message, uh, you have a minute and a half to express it uh, to the community. What is that message? Technical issue there as well. Let's go to Tomas Sanchez. That warrior within. Give us that message, brother. Uh, to, uh, together we stand, divided we fall. In okay. the, the I know it has been a struggle, and yes, the, it's time for us to reach uh, that garifuna within. So uh, the Aharis, uh, our ancestors, 
and give us the force, the courage, and the strength to continue fighting for the survival of the generations to come. Today, the warrior within Tomas Sanchez is an agriculture, he's a farmer, and it's our duty to make sure that we have enough, we need food security to continue our fight. Okay, brother Tomas, Malcolm, can you uh, can you can can you say anything? Yet? Can we hear you? Okay, we're still having technical issues. Uh, Julio Martinez, uh, a minute and a half, warrior within. How can you ignite it? What's the message? Um, my message is that no matter how, no matter how difficult, no matter. If we have to give our life, we are going to continue struggling until we get our goal. Maybe we, we will not see it, but our ancestors know that we are going to do the best effort and our kids and grandkids will recognize it. Thank you, Professor. Malcolm Gonzalez, the warrior within, all the way from Nicaragua. Give us that message. Brother Malcolm? Brother Malcolm, can you hear me? All right, he's having a little bit of a technical issue there. Uh, Brother Antonio, a minute and a half, that message, the warrior within. Uh, give us a message to ignite it. Okay. First of all, we got to learn about, in a Garifuna, in us, discipline, respect, and pride, valor. We have to respect each other. We have a warrior in us, but that energy, we cannot use it against us. We gotta use it against the enemy, okay? So I'm urging all the brothers, Garifuna brothers, focus, respect, and be ready for the enemy. Don't use it against each other. And I've seen a whole lot of that. We're going against each other's. Right. No respect. We have to change that. And also, our diet, exercise, Garifuna, is a strong man. We have to show it. Right. The mind, the body, exercise. By the way, I am a personal trainer. And I'm also a dietary. So that is very important. I know a lot of Garifun of us, we have to consume a lot of things put in our body that we're not supposed to put in our bodies. Let's change that, people. Please. We have to eat healthy. Thank you, sir. Thank you so uh, much. It goes back to what Brother Taman says. If we grow our own food, uh, we will make sure that what we're putting inside of our bodies uh, is what our ancestors Thank put you inside so much. of their bodies, which Absolutely. was natural. You know, we got to go back to being natural. Uh, my message to everyone is this. Uh, like Brother Antonio says, there is this warrior in each side, in, inside of each one of us that is brewing, that is hungry. It's like a baby that desires to grow. But in order for it to grow, you have to feed it. You have to feed Discipline. it. Discipline. Uh, uh, it's okay to listen to someone and take someone's critical uh, uh, thinking about you because they are outsiders looking in and you are an insider who can't not see what they see. It's okay to grow. Absolutely. Right? It's okay to grow. To the people of planet Earth who look like me is now this is the moment that we're going to unify. We're going to work collectively. We know that the enemy's number one strategy is divide and conquer. We know this. 
And yep. like G.I. Joe would say, knowing is half the battle. And since we know that their strategies are their strategies, we can overcome it. It's not like we don't know. Time for us to work collectively. Once again, we want to thank each one of you for tuning in to United States of Africa with our beautiful guest today, the Garifuna Nation. Uh, we are in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Honduras, Nicaragua, Belize, Guatemala, 22 major cities in the United States of America. And we are ready to align ourselves with everyone who's willing to align themselves with us towards self determination. Again, autonomy is not enough because Jamal, Julio, Antonio, Tomas, you and I have autonomy wherever we're at right now. But the key is not autonomy. The key is self-determination. Power to the people. Thank you. Abba, he 